And welcome back to the second part on the how to print ABS series. I'm going to be touching back to the previous video and going over some stuff about ABS fumes and how they are harmful to you and what you should be doing. And we're going to be going over tape for beds, tape for gaps, and making sure your printer is fully ready to print ABS. So stay tuned. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go back to the previous video quickly when I was talking about exposures to VOCs and off-gassing from printing ABS at home. I did gloss over it relatively quickly and I was asking for more documentation which has been provided to me from some helpful people. So I have two links here and I'll go through them and just kind of quickly touch on what they consider safe for printing ABS at home and what exposure limits are acceptable. So the first one here, this is from the Wiley Online Library. This is characterizations of emissions from a desktop 3D printer. So this one is quite in depth and goes into a lot of the technicals and very accurate measurements of 3D printing at home and what kind of off-gassing you can be exposed to. And the other one here is from Makerfleet and this is an article they wrote back in February of 2020. It is cited at the bottom, uh, but they do go over some of the exposure limits as well and they summarize it relatively nicely. But at the end of the day, and to summarize the article, uh, several printers in a poorly ventilated room can be an issue, but if you're only running one printer in a well ventilated room and you're not consistently in the room the entire time it's printing, you know, just going in to check on it, make sure it started good, pulling the print off at the end of the day, your exposure to VOC should be relatively limited and you shouldn't have any problems. Now, off-gassing does release some fumes that some people have issues with. They smell, some people can get headaches. That can be different than the actual harmful effects of the off-gassing. That's just a bad smell, essentially, which if you purchase good ABS, that can be minimized. Now, it does spend some time talking about filtration systems that you can use. So I'm just going to quickly go over the setups that I use on my two Voron V2s that I use for printing ABS. Now, both the printers that I use for printing ABS are fully enclosed. They are non-ventilated. They do have solid side panels on all the sides. And what I have done is run a gasket around all the panels so that when I am printing ABS, one, the gasket helps keep the heat in, and two, it prevents the fumes and VOCs from escaping the printer. If you've ever printed in an enclosed container for any length of time, you will notice that an oily residue will start to build up on the walls. That is the harmful VOCs being released from the ABS during the melting process of creating your print. So what I do on my printers is I fully enclose them to the best of my ability, and then after the print is done, I let the chamber cool back to ambient room temperature before opening the door. What this does, is it allows the VOCs, which rise due to heat, to settle on the walls of the enclosure. That way they're trapped as much as possible inside the printer itself and not floating about around the room. Most of the studies when it comes to off-gassing from a printer, I found are done with the printer in an open air environment in the room, not enclosed. So in my opinion, fully enclosing your printer as best as possible, preventing the air leakage, can help a lot with containing those VOCs. Another option is venting either through a filter or outside. If you are doing that, just be aware, since you are sucking air out, that will affect chamber temperatures, and you really don't need to be doing a lot of filtration. You just need to be running enough air out of the printer to have negative air pressure in the printer enclosure, so that way the fumes aren't seeping out. Now, when it comes to printing ABS, it's not like PLA where you can slap down some blue tape on an uncooled bed, print, and you have a moderate chance of success. So I'll go through the three options that I've used in the past for printing ABS on a heated bed. There are other options out there, of course, but these are the three I've used, and I'll go over the option that I prefer and recommend. So first off is on a glass, or in my case, I used a mirror bed. Now using glass or a mirror by itself can work as long as it is completely free of residue. Um, such as oils from your finger. However, it is best used when you use some sort of adhesion layer in between the material that you're printing and the bed surface. What I used in the past is what's called an ABS slurry. What you do is you take some scrap bits of ABS plastic, either failed prints or just scrap filament that you cut off the spool. You dissolve it in acetone to make a slurry and you brush that onto the bed surface. Now, once that is dry, you print directly on that. It allows the ABS to adhere to the bed better. And then once it cools, you can pop it off. Now there's also store purchase options such as Magigoo that you can purchase and put on the bed, even hairspray some people still use, and those options can work as well. Now the next option is a carborundum glass bed. Now this one's a Anycubic Ultra Base. I used this on my original V1.5 back in the day. 
Now, I did have moderate success with it. It worked pretty well, in my opinion. Air adhesion wasn't the greatest. However, once cooled, the parts popped off great. I never had to pry any ABS parts off of here. And as long as I printed with a brim, parts did come out successful. Now, I used this up until the point of building my Voron V2. This is a glass bed. As most of you know, Vorons don't play too well with glass beds. So I eventually moved on to a PEI bed. Now, originally I had the PEI affixed directly to the bed itself, and that is an option that you can do, and it does work great. However, I've since moved to having removable flex plates with PEI on all my printers, and that is what I currently run. And if possible, that's the option I recommend. Now, when it comes to a PEI flex plate, there are two options. You can get it either textured or untextured, where it's usually just a sticker stuck on the flex plate. Now, personally, I prefer using untextured sticker PEI on a spring steel flex plate versus the textured side. A lot of people like the texture, however, once it degrades, you cannot easily replace it. Whereas on a sticker, you can simply remove the sticker and put a new sticker on. And you can purchase replaceable PEI with the adhesive pre-applied for multiple different vendors. For example, if you're in the US, CSI, or if you're looking for a global source, you can purchase it from Energetic on AliExpress. Now, there are some great advantages to using a removable flex plate. For one, once your print is done, you can simply remove the flex plate from the printer, flex it, and most likely all your prints are gonna just pop right off. No risk damaging them with a putty knife trying to smack them off. Now another good advantage of having a removable plate is of course, since you are not prying off the prints, you have very low chance of damaging your bed. Now I originally started printing with a Monoprice Select Mini that has a very thin aluminum bed on it, and I actually ended up dishing it when I printed something a little too close to the bed, it stuck a little too well. And during the process of getting that print off, I actually put too much force onto the bed and actually bent it a little bit. So at that point, I actually had to move to putting a piece of glass on the bed because the bed was so dished, I couldn't get a good first layer anymore on that printer. So having a removable flex plate removes any undue forces you ever need to put on your printer bed if you ever get a print stuck because you can simply remove the flex plate, put it on a hard, rigid surface, and then you can remove it. So you have no risk of damaging your print bed. Now, flex plate kit can be purchased and added to most printers. When you do buy the kit, make sure you get one that has a magnet rated for ABS temperatures. That's anywhere from 100 to 110 Celsius. And they do make a great option for those looking to print ABS regularly or really any material. And you're just looking for the benefits that a flex plate entails. Now, another thing we need to look into before we get into actually printing ABS is ensuring that our hot end fan, the fan that cools the hot end, doesn't have a downdraft to it when it's active. On most printers, you have the option to simply disable or not turn on your part cooling fan in your slicer settings. But when it comes to your hot end fan, you're gonna need that running. Now on some designs, I know on the Bonsai here, when the hot end fan is running, it does actually blow air downward. So in order to prevent that, you do have some options. Now you can check Thingiverse and see if there's an alternative fan shroud design that you can print. But in my case here, we're gonna go even simpler. We're gonna use tape. Now you need to make sure you use a tape that can withstand the temperature. So either Captain or aluminum tape. And you need to make sure, especially with aluminum tape, you're not accidentally shorting anything out. So what I would recommend is turning on your hot end fan. Now on most printers, you can turn this fan on to check for draft, either by turning the printer on, some printers it turns on automatically, on other printers that have firmware configured for it, there may be a minimum temperature that it has to reach for the hot end to kick on. In that case, just set it a degree or two higher than that, just so the fan kicks on and you can check. Now, once the fan kicks on, you can put your hand under there and make sure you don't burn yourself, of course, but just feel if you have air coming down, you can go in there with a piece of paper just to see how the air is flowing. And if it is blowing down, make sure you try and plug it up as best you can with some tape. Again, ensuring that a tape doesn't actually touch the hot end itself. And if you're using aluminum tape, it doesn't short any wires. You're basically trying to prevent air from blowing down. This causes a draft. And as you know, drafts are not good for ABS printing. Now that should be it for making sure your printer is ready to print ABS. The next video will be going over some settings in Slicer and doing some test ABS prints in different environments. We'll try some open air printing, we'll try and close, we'll try with some different settings and see how things turn out. Hit that like button if you did like what you see today. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you ask them in the comments below. I do try to answer all those. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you can follow along and ring that bell for the notifications. And make sure you're following me on Twitter at 3 dpnero so you can keep up to date with all my current projects. Thank you and have a great day.